This video is sponsored by my favorite website creator, Squarespace, the best place to go when you want to get a domain or create a gorgeous website or an online store. Whenever I make a video about me not wanting children, I always get such a mass of comments from people who still don't know if they should. So if you're unsure what's the right choice for you, why not dig into this a little together and see if we can figure something out? Because what I think is most important here when it comes to a decision as massively, earth-shakingly, life-changing as becoming a parent is just that, that it should be a decision, not something that just happens to happen because, you know, is what society says should be our next step on the adulthood ladder. And to make that decision, I think like three good things to keep in mind is like to be mindful of which content we consume and to be extremely careful who we listen to and to do quite a lot of daydreaming. I think if I was undecided or like didn't know how to be completely sure whether to stay child free or become someone's mother, I think I would adopt an innocent until proven guilty sort of attitude, like child free until proven that I really, really want to be a parent. There are two reasons for me feeling like child free should be the status quo. First of all, because society tells us, and especially as women, again and again and again, that the meaning of life is to procreate and that you're not like a real woman until you are a mother. And that if you don't want to become a mother, there has to be something wrong with you. Obviously, this is all a bunch of nonsense of the utmost sinistry because I am here to tell you right now that I feel very much like a real woman, whatever that is. I mean, I look down and I go like, yeah, I feel like really quite womanly today too. And there is nothing wrong with me, as in there is no particular reason for me not wanting to have children except the fact that I simply don't want to. The second reason I think it's probably a good idea to adopt the child-free until proven parent attitude is that it's of course such a monumental decision and one that you can never ever, whatever happens, take back. Once the kid is there, you're in it for life, like zero return policy. That sounded a bit scary, didn't it? So maybe now will be a good time to tell you that my reason for making this video is not to push anyone in any direction. I have zero stakes here. I do not care one tiny iota if you have children or not. The only thing I care about is that you and me and all of us are encouraged to ask ourselves the question of not going into anything just because we've been ceaselessly told that it's a thing to do. Finish school, get married, buy house, get kids. Like maybe that's not for everyone. I finished uni ages ago and I don't work in the field that I studied and I'm in my 30s and I have been with the same partner for coming up on 18 goddamn years and we're still not married. I have a flat in London, not a house in a suburb with the dog and the Volvo and even though I am told by strangers online every single day that there is something wrong with me and they pity me and David and our sad lifestyle, I have to disagree. I firmly believe that there is no other life on the planet that I would rather be living than this, than my own. A common response I get online though is whenever I talk about this, that this is something that I will regret when I'm older, when I'm a cute little lady without children or grandchildren or someone to take care of her. And you know what? Maybe. Maybe I will. How could I know? But the thing is, I don't think it's very smart to create a whole life based on what I might or might not feel when I'm 70. Also, with the money it costs to raise a child, David and I could hire a live-in nurse, if need be, to take care of us just fine. But, on a more serious note, I have made quite a few videos where I talk about being child-free, and every single time I do, there are women in their 60s and 70s and 80s commenting, saying that they are child-free and have never once regretted that decision. So we need to stop saying to women that they don't know their own mind. If you know, you know. That being said, what about if you don't know? Is the uni, marriage, house, kid your type of life? Or is children your type of life but in a whole other setting than suburbia? Because of course, it doesn't have to be one or the other. There are more options than suburbia and bohemia, of course. So question is, for those of you on the fence, how do you know whether to stick to contraception or stop using it? I have a friend back in Sweden who's been going a bit back and forth on whether she wants children or not. She and her partner, they love their life, they have the sweetest cat, a lovely home and they have jobs that they actually, you know, enjoy doing. 
So they debated for the longest time whether they should just continue to enjoy their life or if they wanted to bring a baby into the mix. Fast forward to today and now she is pregnant because in the end they did decide that they wanted to mix in a baby. I was talking to her the other day and we were discussing just which books we've read lately and I said that I had read Rachel Cusk's memoir A Life's Work recently which is a book where Cusk talks about like basically what a horrible time she had when she was pregnant and during labour and after the baby was born and raising a toddler. So she wrote this memoir as a sort of endeavour to nuance the way pregnancy and early motherhood is talked about publicly since she felt that most of the literature on the subject that she read as pregnant was all about how wonderful everything is and how much glow you have as a pregnant woman and what little bundles of joy every child is. So if you're not having a good time as pregnant or as a new mother, you kind of feel shame and guilt and that something is wrong with you for not glowing and feeling like your whole world has a gold sparkle now that you're a mother. I read this book not because I want to read about pregnancy or about early motherhood. I read the book because I love Rachel Cusk as a writer, I love her fiercely. She could write about the history of the lawnmower and I would read it probably. Anyway, I was telling my pregnant friend that whatever she does, for the love of God, not read this book while pregnant because it would surely freak her out and make her like change her mind about, you know, the whole enterprise. But she just calmly tells me, without batting a lash, that yeah, she has read it. And she read it before getting pregnant, when she was still undecided, and it didn't make up her mind to not have children. The reason why this is shocking is because of my own reaction to Cusk's book. I'm not sure that I've ever had such a physical reaction to a book before. The way she talks about the physical aspects of pregnancy and the emotional turbulence of new motherhood, and there I say it, the absolute nauseating act of breastfeeding, my adrenaline levels were so high, I felt sick many times and shocked and exhausted. And every single time I put that book down after a reading session, I thanked all my lucky stars that I have had the extremely good sense of not myself becoming a mother. It has never been more clear to me that motherhood it's just not for me. So my friend being able to read that book while on the fence about having children and still later go ahead, I feel like, you know what? Yeah, you probably really, really want to have kids. So my point is this, I think most of our lifestyle decisions are based on our reaction to different content. We see something or read something and that looks like a wonderful life and then we want it. Whether it's a job, a city or a flat or a partner or parenthood. The trouble with parenthood though is that I find that it's still very, very romanticized. The way we talk about it in films and literature and TV or on Instagram is often very rosy and golden. So I think it's important to not just immerse ourselves in the romanticized version of parenthood and not just in the nightmare version of it either, but in both and above all in the more realistic nuanced versions in the middle. We should know what we're getting into before we make such a massive decision happy parents or unhappy parents or happy child-free adults or unhappy child-free adults, we should see it all. So should we start a little watch list and read list in the comments? Give me your best, best tips for nuanced portrayals of parenthood and of child-freeness. Of course, I need to absolutely shamelessly mention my own little novel, since I mean one of the main themes is basically what happens if one part of the relationship wants children and one doesn't. And the main female character is like a happily child-free woman. And talking of Rachel Cusk, in her novels, the narrator often has a complicated but beautiful relationship to her children. I absolutely love the mother-daughter relationship in her novel Second Place, if you haven't read it. Also, I love Sigrid Nunes depictions of family, but even more so about being child-free because in her later books, the narrator is a senior, author woman who has decided to live without both partner and children and is completely content and assured in her decision. But what else? Both David and I have been trying to think of nuanced complex portrayals of family life and of child-free life and it's honestly really hard to find which is actually one of the reasons that I wrote OK Days in the first place because I felt like my happily child-free life wasn't really represented much. So if you can think of any of like nuanced portrayals, share your best film and book and TV recommendations in the comments, please. I also mentioned that I think doing a fair bit of daydreaming is a good idea. 
The thing is though, I feel like when we picture our future, we most often picture best case scenarios and worst case scenarios, which is of course helpful to see like what our dream and our nightmare situations would look like. But I think we don't often enough tend to picture the in-between, you know, the everyday sort of mundane, slow, unimportant Tuesdays. When I picture those days, I know that what I'm most happy doing is being quiet by myself, reading or cooking dinner with David, or maybe meeting a friend for a drink where we discuss careers and literature. I'm not a person who enjoys hustle and bustle around me all the time. I want to give my brain a lot of free time to ponder life and philosophize. I enjoy a simple, uncomplicated life. I enjoy beautiful things and a lovely home and fresh cut flowers and a nice chilled chablis. And I enjoy good TV and yes, I do enjoy sleeping uninterrupted for eight hours straight. Most of all though, I enjoy having so much time for David, like hanging out all the time, just the two of us, talking about whatever for hours on end. So as you can see for me, picturing that normal mundane Tuesday evening, it's quite easy to see that child freeness is for me. So what, how is a nice mundane Tuesday evening for you, if you picture it? But I mean, besides films and daydreaming, we should of course meet real life children and real life parents and ask them all the really tough questions. But also keeping in mind that other parents, they often for some reason try to persuade us to have children. Have you noticed this? I went to a wedding with David a while back and we met a lovely couple with four children. When they asked us when we'll have kids and we said, you know, never, they kind of took it upon themselves to launch a campaign at us to have at least one because apparently one is like a handbag. I mean, that was quite a fun conversation, but I know that a lot of you are having less fun conversations because one thing we need to bring up here that I haven't touched on yet is this, our parents. David and I are lucky with relatives and friends. We haven't gotten any pressure to have kids from our own surroundings, but I know that this is rare. Most parents seem to find no issue with guilting their children and especially daughters into becoming parents. I'm sure they mean no harm. I'm sure they want their daughters to be happy. And of course, many, many, many daughters will have children and be perfectly happy as parents. But to those of you on the fence, maybe the most important thing of all is to not listen to your parents. Whatever they are saying on the matter, close your ears. The same with your friends and your relatives and even your own partner, because here, their opinion on your becoming a parent or not matters exactly zero. It's not their life, it's yours. It would be a disaster, wouldn't it, to be guilted into a decision this huge and this irreversible, only to then wake up one day and realizing that you didn't listen to your own self. We women are taught this from the very start, that we should listen to the needs of others, that we shouldn't be selfish, that we should put others first and always, always be grateful and humble. And we should be self-sacrificing and caring and supportive and yes, maternal. And if we're not those things, we're told that we're frigid and cold and bitchy, utterly unfeminine. So it's up to us to teach ourselves and our sisters that no, actually, sometimes we really, really, really need to be selfish and to put ourselves first, to listen to our gut and to have like, the ambition to create a life that best suits us, whatever that life looks like, no matter if our parents or our friends or society approves. Because one thing about parenthood, it's permanent. So if you want to have children, great. If you don't, great too. But if you're unsure, take your time. Even if everyone else and you know, biology is stressing you, don't stress. This is not a decision anyone should make under pressure. And I think most important, close your ears, don't listen to anyone else because they are not you. And then if all else fails, read Rachel Kusk. Seriously, it's like a trial by fire, that book. If you're still feeling motherly or fatherly after that book, I mean, kudos, that's impressive. Have you read it? And how are you feeling? Are you on the fence or have you decided already if parenthood is for you? Like always, whenever I do these videos, I really, really look forward to your comments. You're always so supportive and smart and I'm lucky to have such graceful and kind community on here. And like always, whatever you have or haven't decided on yet, I support you. I'm sure your parents and your friends and your relatives are all lovely people, 
but this is just not their decision to make. So stay strong and go with that beautiful gut of yours. It's rarely wrong, is it? Give me a like if you found this at all helpful or interesting to discuss and don't forget to click subscribe if you're new to my channel, of course, so that I will see you next week already. Now, do you want to create a beautiful site or maybe start your own blog? If so, you should definitely do it with Squarespace. Listen to this, with Fluid Engine, a next generation website design system, it's never been easier for you to unleash your creativity. So you start with an incredible template and customize everything by simply dragging and dropping. It seriously couldn't be easier. Squarespace is also amazing with blogging tools to share your stories, photos and videos to make it easy to reach your audience. You can also auto-post your content to Twitter, Facebook or Tumblr and they have great traffic analytics so that you can see how many people are visiting your site, how long they're staying for, where they're coming from and what they're interested in, like parenting or interior design or maybe books for example. So what are you waiting for? Go get your free trial today at squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash genymaster to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Until next week, take care of yourself and listen to that gut of yours. See you soon. Bye bye.